Hi, this is Tom Madden. I'm the team lead for BLAST at the NCBI, part of the National Library of Medicine at the NIH in Bethesda, Maryland. Today, I'm going to tell you about Elastoblast. It lets you run your BLAST searches with minimal effort on the cloud. I also want to show you how Elastoblast in the cloud makes it easier to collaborate, especially when you're collaborating with people at another institution. First, what is BLAST? Briefly, BLAST compares DNA or protein sequences to a database of DNA or protein sequences. We have a web page, a command line suite of tools we call BLAST Plus, and some cloud products. Elastic BLAST is built on top of the BLAST Plus command line suite. Elastic BLAST starts cloud instances or machines and populates them with a database and software and queues searches to them. The search is run there and not on your local machine. It manages the resources so the instances are shut down when your searches are done. Your results are saved in cloud buckets, which is just an area on the cloud you can store files in. For Elastic Blast, we've used services like Kubernetes or AWS Batch that are maintained by the cloud provider. There are a lot of reasons to use Elastic Blast, but I want to emphasize that Elastic Blast makes it relatively simple to run your Blast searches on the cloud and do it efficiently. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook to demonstrate Elastic Blast. It shows how you can use Elastic Blast and the cloud to collaborate with others. We're also making it available on GitHub and you can play with it yourself. Greg Borton, who works in my group, wrote this notebook. This notebook allows you to blast sequences against a database of protein fragments that contain an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. The database sequences are from this publication by Yuri Wolf and collaborators. Based on some feedback from Yuri, I reformatted the file, assigned taxonomy to all the sequences I could, and made a blast database out of it. We're using a mosquito virome as a query in and running BLASTX, which means we translate the query in six frames and align to the protein database. Here, we write a configuration file that describes the search. I just wanted to point out the database of RDRP protein fragments. The path starts with S3 colon slash slash, indicating that it's a cloud bucket at AWS. It's world readable, so I can share it easily. By the way, being world readable is, of course, configurable the path to the query file. It's a gzip fast aid that I downloaded from the NCBI. S some blast options. Finally, the command to submit the search. That's pretty simple. What you did not see here is the specification of the instance type at AWS. There's something like 400 of them that you can select from at AWS, and the best one depends upon your blast search. Elastic Blast selects one for you based on the size of your database. Of course, you can also specify an instance type if you'd prefer. Greg also did a bit of post-processing of the results using the pandas data frame to show some information about the taxonomic distribution of the matches. With a notebook, it's easy to change the workflow. A collaborator could modify what you've done to try out new ideas. They could even try out a new database or query set. Their searches, their blast searches can still run on the cloud. By the way, this search cost me about 10 cents to run on my personal AWS account. My poster is still at, up at S-022 and presents example runs that I didn't have time to cover here. We'll also be at the CoFest on Friday with a different and bigger notebook. Stop by and give it a try if you can. Let us know if you have suggestions about things Elastic Blast should do. The NCBI will also have a Birds of a Feather tonight at 6.15. Here are some links to help you get started. I recommend starting with the top one. That will introduce you to Elastic Blast and then guide you to a quick start to try Elastic Blast out. I've also included a link to our GitHub page with the source code, as well as one with the demos and the Jupyter Notebook I discussed. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the folks involved with this project as well as the support we had from the NCBI and NLM in the NIH Strides program.